the sun and it's the ecliptic. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, can you share with folks the um, where to find the other articles? Yeah, and on the alchemicaljourney.co.uk, which you kindly put up there. Beautiful. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Thank you. Um, Wonderful. <clears throat> so, yeah, my choice in reading that is... Uh, the right, yes, it is absolutely, <laughs> and 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 who would who would have thought? And we have the very person who wrote these beautiful articles for our enlightenment. Uh, our final foray into the Glastonbury zodiac on this turn of the wheel takes us into the deep imaginal waters of a landscape soaked in myth and legend. It is the legacy of Christ as Ichthus, the fish, the chief inaug inaugurator and overseer of the Piscean Age, who is most obviously represented here. We are led up to Fisher's Hill, to one of two fish identified by Catherine Maltwood, marked out by the contours of Weariol Hill, renowned as the site where Joseph of Arimathea landed by boat with the Grail Cup. In Maltwood's words, he laid the sacred blood upon the altar of the fish before planting the staff that was to grow into the holy thorn. Among other things, this has served as a calendar peg marking the vernal equinox for the past 2,000 years. Weriol Hill is said to be the burial place of a gigantic sacred salmon, and this is easy to imagine when viewed from the tour, and it is not the only salmon in town. On our annual Pisces walk on the alchemical journey, we first tread the Beckery salmon, first mentioned around 1900, before Malt would ever dream the zodiac into being. It is here that we find Bride's or Bridget's Mound, one of the most meaningful sacred sites in the Glastonbury Zodiac. Walking upon Porch, Porchstall Road to Cradle Bridge, we meet the River Brew and follow Alice Buckton's route, we come upon the Trees of Sorrow, once a willow, now a hawthorn, and we leave our cares here as we prepare to honour the sacred feminine. Nearby is Bride's Well, where Chalice Wells' mysterious blue bowl was discovered in 1905 through the visions of Wells, Wellesley Tudor Pole. From here, it is a short walk across the field to Bride's Mound, the site of St. Bridget's Chapel, no longer extant, part of an earlier Saxon monastery said to be dedicated to Mary Magdalene. Again, here are the uh, gospel figures, because the gospel is the zodiac. So there may be some historical validity to these accounts. There's, there's no denying that, but there's no denying that all of this comes from above. It always has, it always will. This hollowed place was once, okay, yep, yeah, this hollowed place was once the tra traditional disembarking place for boats and is here where some believe Mary Magdalene herself may have disembarked if and when she ever came to these islands. Our own Piscean pilgrimage continues on to Weriol Hill via Pompali's Bridge on the main A39 road. It is from this bridge, the legend goes, that King Arthur cast Excalibur into the river before entering Avalon, an act of surrender that is certainly fitting for this sign of Pisces, in which we must relinquish our attachments, let go of our sense of personal distinction, and prepare to merge back into the great cosmic ocean. So our journey has become full circle through the 12 signs of the zodiac, a hero's quest from birth to maturity, to the doorway of death and the uncertain passage through the underworld, to rise again, initiated and prepared to serve the kingdom. And only now, at the final gateway of Pisces, through realising the wound of the Fisher King and entering the eternal song of Orpheus, might we dissolve back into unity and the bliss of pure being. So, um, yeah. I'm satisfied that, um, that those three uh, journeys through those three signs will have wet our appetite enough to want to look for those other nine and to um, yeah, confirm that this, this stuff is, is, is there and it and it's, must be there for a benefit to us. You know, people don't uh, go to great lengths to make uh, monuments like Stonehenge, the Tor, um, just because it's pretty. Yeah. There's always a benefit to it. That's the way they used to do things in ancient times. And so, you know, we are the beneficiaries of this great science, if only we pay attention. And that's all we're doing here. We're just paying attention and saying, oh, look, mm, that corresponds with this and this corresponds with that. How interesting. Uh, how far away are we from a break? An hour and 
five minutes you've done. Yeah, break time, eh? We'll have 20 minutes. Thank you. The second half, shall we? Uh, now, <clears throat> the Michael Merry line, I just had a thought about that. We were speaking about it outside during the break. Uh, Michael is Jesus, L, the archangel, and Mary is, see this, this line, remember we said it, it's, it's along here, this line, at the, at the head of Aries, where Street is, um, and Mary is, Mars is the ruler of Aries, and backwards it's Ram, the Ram, Aries, so... <clears throat> need to look, look at things like that. Just pay attention. Um, and now, how do we know um, that this is uh, pointing back to astrotheology? Let's just do a little quick detour from the, uh, the presentation. Just do a little snippet of astrotheology. Uh, <clears throat> Michael said is Jesus. J-E-S is yes. And it's written like this, I-H-S. And that's Greek, I, E, the H is an E, S, yes, Jesus. And it's always in the sun. You always see it, they put it in, inside the sun. Perhaps we can see some slides of this later. <clears throat> I have an entire presentation on this. Uh, and I'll, pre I'll present that one uh, at Glastonbury, at the gathering. Which Glastonbury gathering? Stonehenge. Oh, Truth Juice, you mean? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Truth Juice. At Stonehenge. I'm glad you corrected me. Yes. When is that? This That's weekend. Tomorrow. Yeah. This weekend. This week. Starts Friday proper. Yeah. And uh, so we'll, we'll be looking at the sun in history. What, what has ever been said about the sun? That's what we're going to be doing. And it's yes. You see, but we also, this is why we say yes in the beautiful English, Anglish, angelish language. It's the language of angles. Angels. And that's why we say yes, because the sun is affirmative. <coughs> and it sets, and it rises. Yes. From this, though, we say Jesus, do we not? Jesus is simply a compromise of Jupiter and Zeus. That's what the Romans gave us, the ruler of the last age that we've been in, Pisces. As the sun has gone backwards through Pisces in the last 2,000 years, old man Jupiter is the boss of Pisces. So we've been in that sign, and Jesus, Jupiter Zeus, is the ruler, or was the ruler. We are now in Aquarius with Saturn, old man Kronos, <coughs> as the ruler. Jesus... <coughs> Jupiter Zeus. Anyone here studied the Greek myths? Who was uh, Zeus's daddy? Cronus, the guy we mentioned before. Yeah, old man time. When it's your time, he pulls out the sickle. He's the Grim Reaper, isn't it? He's the Grim Reaper. Always emaciated, always black, because Saturn is the ruler, he's black. Um, in the Bible, you see in the Greek myths it tells us that... Uh, Kronos and Rhea had Zeus. And so, but in the scriptures, it says Jesus, the father of Jesus, was Joseph. Yeah. No, God. <laughs> yeah, God. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Joseph wasn't his father. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But we... We have, to, we have to go with this because that's what they tell us, right? So in the, in, in the Gospels, because the Gospels are what? They're songs. They're songs. A Gospel. It's a song. It, the Greeks called them tragudia. We call them tragedies. You know, when you go and see a tragedy, uh, one of Sophocles' uh, plays or something like that, and they put their masks on and change personas. They are called tragudia. Tragos is goat. Odia is ode. Song. Goat song. Which goat? Capricorn. Because Capricorn is the mason's sign. The motto of Capricorn is I use. I build. So the sun is born in Capricorn every year on the 25th of December. Does he not? Every year in Capricorn. 
Capricorn is the mason. Jesus is a carpenter. The carpenter means mason. Astronomer. Noah. Astrologer. That's what it means. Someone who knows the inside story. And this is the inside story. You see, <coughs> Jupiter Zeus, Jesus, <coughs> his father is Joseph, is it not? In the Bible, in the Gospels, in the songs. Seth is Seth. Is Set is Saturn is Kronos. And uh, Jesus' mother, mother? Mary. Mary? Kronos, of course, was married to Rhea, wasn't he? Rhea? Maria. Joseph and Maria. Set and Rhea. Satan and Rhea. So, <clears throat> it's just the one story. It always is, it always will be. During the break, a gentleman came up to me, David, and uh, presented me with his book, The Glastonbury Gl Grail. Uh, please, David, can you come up and just uh, share some information about this book? I want to get that on the camera. This must be uh, absolutely wonderful. I've just flicked through it. The pictures are amazing. And um, this is going to reveal a lot about the... Uh, the Zodiac. I just want to share that with you folks before we proceed. <clears throat> Thanks, okay. David. I'm very good at talking. <laughs> I hope I haven't embarrassed you. You can't stop me once I start. <laughs> 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 what do you want me to say? Um, just please, if you could read what you read me on the back of the book and uh, just the, the contents, please. <laughs> so, and, the whole and, contents. And, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> And your uh, contacts so that people can. Uh... Well, probably you know me anyway. Most of you have seen me around town. I mean, I, I, I moved as an Essex boy into this area. I didn't know anything, and I happen to end up. Happen, I happen to end up living on the tail of the Girt Top of Langport, which was just mentioned. My little place with my partner Susan, my wife Susan, is is actually a hamlet as such. And it gave forth a massive download, which became this little book, uh, which I've kind of been quite nervous about putting out. So I haven't really put, I haven't shouted about it. I just let it have one shot at it. Uh, and people can get it from me. But, you know, it's honestly, it's seven years of a massive download that I got. And I'm sharing it as a, as a sort of guide, really, for people to, to come in to do the similar thing to John Wadsworth has actually experienced what we're living. And I was talking to John in the break and saying, what actually is this? And neither of us really can fathom out how it works, where you've got, you know, the bullseye on Taurus having, you know, target, you know, the bullseye, you know. It's, there's all these synchronicities seem to happen. And my, my feeling is that, that the powers that be up above know that there's a holographic universe and thought patterns are holograms mm -hmm. like our thoughts uh, make us do things like if it's oh I've got to go and catch the bus now you know it's just like someone's it's slotted in a thought pattern is actually a picture and I think that the zodiac has been carefully created through a sort of holographic um, thought patterns that are put into people here I believe it or not, that are trusted operatives of a, of a healing mission for our planet. And I believe this gentleman here on the left is an ex a great, fantastic example of what's going to be coming out uh, as you know the veil is lifted. These simple things that are anchoring century zodiac signs into um, periods and characters which are... To somehow anchor the zodiac story of the cycle of life in, in, in the psyche. My belief is really that the age of Aquarius is the deity for that age actually will be Arthur and Guinevere because this land was seeded with the Arthurian mythos and I think that um, in a kind of sort of I think 
the word I'm thinking of, but an archetypal way. We all know the Arthurian mythos without even reading it. Who's read the actual high history of the Holy Grail? You know, no one's basically read it unless you're an academic as such. Mm. But somehow we've got a, a sort of an attachment to it. When you get here, it all opens up. You have to live in the town to experience it. It's a, it's a huge brain job, this, this town. I mean, I don't live in it, but I could do it. I, 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 happen, I, I, don't want hij- I don't want to hijack the sort of meeting, but quite frankly, I got involved in a pub called King Arthur. And, I mean, I've never, ever come across anything so chaotic and like energy. And there's a, whoa, it's so the wobbly thing. But anyway, going back on that, um, the... Um, Interesting thing that I found, Santos, that you were talking about, that all the things that you're coming up with, that many of us are beginning to wake up to, are the very things that I would say all religion has been burying. Because they didn't work the work of the Creator to ever come about. They never knew, they never wanted Lord Enki to be ever acknowledged as a compassionate. Um, Creator God, and He's waiting for our planet to come together. You know, and that is what the tour was all about. Why, you know, you can see your high street decorated with various um, all the different religions somehow, all the different beliefs. Everyone's basically got their little pathway. And the common denominator of that is Glastonbury, because we, we've been led to this kind of place where then we find the Zodiac, and then, as John Wadsworth finds out, you tour the Zodiac, and somehow your internal sun, or whatever we have in our solar plexus, and our heart gets anchored somehow through our DNA into the land. How it's done, don't ask me, but I think Thinking in those intuitive ways is much more, you know, the way to do it than reading loads and loads of books. I think we can feel it here. This is a, a hotbed of um, psychic and heartfelt uh, feelings, and we're desperately wanting our planet to kind of resolve this whole tale. So I'm going to read this, and I'm going to sit down and let it get on. But you wanted me to read this. This is the book. It's my kind of journey. It's everyone's journey, hopefully. Go to the Zodiac. Visit the dog first. That's important. The magical Aquarian Grail story of Avalon, set in the Glastonbury Zodiac and the Somerset Levels, describing how each great age evolves with the awakening of humanity's heart, third eye and crown chakras, and the return of the true Grail lineage the Royal Planetary Dragon Clan, as it is Glastonbury that is the anchor point on this planet for the Aquarian Age. This fairy story will help to change your reality and describe how the energy of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere, i.e. upstairs, the stars, as above, so below, just returned to sacred Avalon at the turning of the ages. So, there you go. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank <coughs> now, before we <coughs> move forward with the presentation, here's a um, wonderful book. I've been staying at uh, Craig and Heidi's um, in Birmingham from Truth Juice, Craig and Heidi. And uh, Heidi pulled this out and another book which I will, will also present in a minute. Uh, but this was the first of the two books she pulled out. Behold Jerusalem by... Uh, um, Abraham K. Griffiths. Graham. 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 Graham, Graham K. Griffiths. K. Griffiths. Yeah. Beautiful. And here you see England, and here you see the fish. See Cornwall down here, Penzance, on the tail. Clearly, now, every time I see a look at England, I see the fish. It's unmistakable. Uh, Here we have the dove, the Isle of Wight. The dove, Libra. 
this is beautiful. Here's the land. And I would imagine that York is here. I went to York when I did a presentation. It may be further up, yet yeah, maybe even up here somewhere, but it's certainly around the lamb and its staff. Look where Christ is. And this is all in the land here. Newcastle would be up here, wouldn't it? But anyway, I went to York, went to the Minster, and saw Constantine there in his arrogant pose on his couch, where it says on the plaque right there at the foot, it says Constantine the Great in uh, 325 or even earlier, it may have been because Nicaea was 325, but anyway, um, enthroned himself as the Emperor of Rome from, from York. And you get New York, the stock exchange which runs the planet, and you get the York Rite of Freemasonry. And down the road from this cathedral, <coughs> the Minster there, there's three other churches along the ley lines in York. And in one of those, uh, George Bush's uh, ancestors are buried. I think the Plantagenets, I don't know. Is that the Plantagenets side? Or were they in Yank, uh, Lancashire? Anyway, I think it's... York and Lancashire come later, they're the roses. Yes, yes, much later. But if you go back you realise there's a big connection between this country and good old Rome. Big connection. It's one and the same corporation. It's a corporation that they run out of the Vatican. Yeah. I won't get into that because I'm going to have to save that presentation for uh, Dublin. Unum sanctum. The island. Oh, yeah. Self-determination, sovereignty presentation. Yeah, oh, it's, it's all good. When, when's that happening? No worries. When's that happening? We've already been to Giordano Bruno's monument, the Syncretist group from Rome, and did a 30 second um, moment of respect and promised him that he didn't die in vain. And we filmed that in Italian and in English. And uh, so we've, we've been on some momentous little. Uh, uh, stops on this journey of mine, but what, um, Santos. What, when's the, the uh, talk in, in Dublin? It'll be early September. Third uh, or the fourth of September. Mm. Yeah, and then I go to Holland, buy, uh, do a couple of presentations there on the eighth. Mm. So it'll be between the last one I do in London on the first of September <coughs> and the eighth. So I imagine that'll be advertised perhaps on the Truth Juice. Web page maybe. It's twenty quid to fly to Amsterdam. So you could fly to Amsterdam, see Santos, have a smoke. <laughs> I just think that's a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> now I will have to get this book myself because I've just discovered it <clears throat> here, of course. Uh, Sagittarius here, you see, it's lovely. Um, and so this this land being here, this is very very significant. I mean, this is I've, I've got I must look into this and this staff here, the, the staff of the land. Here we have I, don't know, I think that's Capricorn. I can't see this so clearly, but uh, there's the book. Found the zodi zodiacal miracle in the map of Britain and Northern Ireland, and its message for our time. I imagine that would be a great read, folks. Here is another book that Heidi had on the shelf, The Lost Zodiac. Now, here she's uh, another Catherine. Hmm, this one's spelt with a C. Catherine Tennant. Double N there, Tennant. Uh, the Lost Zodiac, 22 ancient star signs. Those 22 are the 22 that always turn up in the esoteric sciences. The Hebrew alphabet. The tarot. <coughs> uh, and <coughs> these are extra zo mostly uh, extra zo zodiacal signs, in other words, the deacons. So along the ecliptic, along the ecliptic, there are always 12 signs. But they have 
their deacons, you see. So Aries has Perseus, Cassiopeia, and Cetus. Taurus has Orion, Eridanus, and Origa. Canis Major, Canis Menor, Lepus. I mean, all right, we can go on, but uh, uh, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and Argo, the ship. Remember that? So on and so forth. Uh, Corvus, uh, Crater, that's an interesting one. Yeah, that's the, the cup, the Holy Grail. Yeah. And isn't it interesting, I've already done this, we, um, in Birmingham, I did a presentation called The Art of Gospel Writing, and basically in five hours we had the whole group knowing how to write a gospel. A tragedy, a tragedy, a comedy. Dante called it a comedy. Milton just called it Paradise Lost. It's, it's the same one story. It's Shakespeare called them plays. The gospels are called gospels. There's many gospels. The Nag Hammadi Library is there's hundreds in the Nag Hammadi Library alone of pre-historical um, uh, Jesus gospels. Still talking about Jesus and Mary. Because it's talking about science, it's syncretism, it's always been. Gospels have always been, we've always been writing songs. <laughs> They're just songs. Tragudi. So, along here, th here this book it starts with Pegasus. Uh, I, I think that's, in my uh, humble opinion, that's a mistake. It should start with, it should start with Aries. But probably... Um, a lot of astrology does begin with January and Aquarius for some reason, um, but it's incorrect. <laughs> it should always begin with Aries. Astrology always begins with Aries. Gospel writing, on the other hand, always begin with either Aries or Capricorn. The goat, the tragudi. But these are so similar, it's the sheep and the goats. You see, the goat rules the solstice, and Aries rules the line of truth, the equinox. Truth, because the sun splits the day in the middle to the second every year at these two points. So that's the line of truth. Aries, the other word for Aries, see Aries arise. You can see the word arises, Aries, because he arises here, Mars, the phallic, every morning. Aries rules. <laughs> Jesus. Keep it clean. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot recently. <laughs> <laughs> Any children here today? Under my third child. So, and this in astrology is known as the ecclesiastical, religious, spiritual mm. axis. This is the political. The king and the priest, the cardinal cross. These are all sacrificial signs. Sacrificial lamb, sacrificial goat, cancer is sacrificed, Libra is sacrificed. And so you see, interesting so, um, aside here is that uh, Uranus is here at the moment in Aries and Pluto is over here in Capricorn and they're both destroyers <laughs> and they wreak havoc where they go. Last time Pluto was in Capricorn, we had the French and the American Revolution. This time round, we will see this political axis, the king, and all concerns uh, political, <coughs> we will see some, uh, some big changes. And also ecclesiastical, the sheep and the goats. You see, Jesus says, when I come into my kingdom, I will separate the sheep from the goats. The kingdom is this, Leo Aquarius. See, Regulus that sits on the ecliptic in the heart of the lion, Leo, where the sun rules, the seven-rayed god. Uh, we're, in the, we're in the age of Leo. It's the age of Leo. We, we, we just keep it simple and say Aquarius because we pay attention to the vernal equinox because the vernal equinox is at the start of the year. So we, we, we neglect or we ignore the, the true ruler. 
When Leah comes around, it's the Christ. The Arabs call that star Regulus the Messiah. That's the Messiah. Over here you have Saturn. Horus.